is Russell Taylor with Hydro Force, an electronic sales and application engineer. Today, we'll talk about DVDR0201A basic setup information. This presentation by talking about the different configurable controllers that Hydro Force offers. The first is the EVDR0101A. This has one PWM output and one analog input. It features Deutsch type connectors, the DT series connectors. We're going to use a program called HF Impulse to configure this controller. We're going to use HF Impulse to configure the 0101 and the 0201A. The 01A has one analog input, voltage current, resistive, pulse, PWM, out valve control, and an LED encased in the, uh, the body of it for put in air monitor. Monitoring. Put voltage or output voltage 9 to 32 volts. Control current up to 2 amps, 40 to 4 hertz. And version of IP69. The 20 converter. Range minus 40 to plus 85. And a e certification. Some part and remaining connectors and programming cables are on the right hand side. The A is an excellent choice for replacing some of the analog controls that are on the market, including the analog controls offered by Hydroforce. Uh, we see some list price ranges uh, for $140 for the A versus a higher uh, dollar range for the, the analog uh, controls. Uh, more secure in this type of controller, there's no pots to adjust. No change over time with an aging controller as far as you know potentiometers getting dirty. Uh, the is showing output intensity of the controller. It can be saved on a PC for easy replacement of the controllers, or a production environment can be used to flash controllers very quickly, as opposed to the analog controls that you have to actually set up each control individually. I can up to two amps, no need for different part numbers for different current ranges. So easy to stock. Um, on the Hydroforce analog controls, we had a DIN type connector out output. The next steps are how to change from the DIN type connector to uh, Deutsch type connector to uh, interface with this controller. Um, you can harness with industry standard Deutsch connectors, change the coils to Deutsch type connections. Uh, Hydro offers coils with both DIN and Deutsch, so it may be it's just as simple to replace the coils on your valve. And then there's also a conversion harness you can build. Here's some part numbers that are available from Hydroforce to build that connection going from a DIN type connector to a mating Deutsch type connector. The of this demonstration is the O201A, and this is that product. Um, and looks very similar to the 101A, with the exception that this one has an 8 pin Deutsch on it, where 101A had a 4 pin Deutsch on it. This is a program called HF Impulse to configure it. One input device or J1939 device. So we'll drive these two valves with either uh, J1939 signals or an analog input or a mixture of both. Uh, then we'll also uh, look at the same type of ranges that the 101 did as far as voltage, current, resistive, pulse, or PWM. Single output valve control. Can control for J1939 or can open, so perfect for distributed control. If you have a system that needs a, a couple extra outputs or one extra input, this may be controller for you. Or better, maybe this is the controller that you sit on a valve, on a, uh, on a valve block, and then you um, work to it. So it's more of a distributed control kind of idea. And then once again, just like the 101As, the 101As have an LED for output error monitoring. Design applications are the same as the 101, 936 volts, drive a 2 amp output, IC9K environmental protection, 12 bit analog to digital converter, high temperature minus 40 plus 85, and the certified. The OA is an update from the uh, the product, the 0201. And this slide talks about some of the features that, that happen between the 0201 and the 0201A. Uh, a, a different type processor, so a faster architecture type processor, um, does have the LEDs in the case that lets you know how hard you're trying to drive that valve. Uh, the PWM outputs, as opposed to high-frequency PWM 
input. There's a uh, available for this controller. Uh, control points, you know, we'll understand what that means here in a little bit. Ramps in addition to input ramps. And 1939 messaging was improved. Available on the controller is the EVDR 0201A general purpose valve driver, EFR, the fan drive controller, and GDR, hydraulic generator control, closed version. Um, you know, so we're on that version right now, available soon. R01A and an ETDR 0101A. This is the uh, software package that we're going to use to configure this controller, HF Impulse, uh, to set up and monitor configurable devices, the 1A and the 201A. It's available free of charge through our electronic portal on the website. And I encourage all of you to, um, to download this and, and do some experimenting with it. You communicate with these controllers, the 0201A through a USB to CAN device, such as a Cosser or a Peak system. A slide with some other uh, screens that will be available on HF Impulse. Spend a whole lot of time on this because we'll see it in the demonstration here in a couple minutes. The development kit. So there are several items that are needed to initially set up an EVDR, including um, obviously the controller, a development harness, a USB to CAN adapter, and some stuff guides. So we have a package where all of these are available as, as one part number, and there are cost savings over purchasing them individually. A that you may need can be through email support, electronics.support at hydroforce.com. Um, information, as far as just general information, at hydroforce.com, there's a, a electronic control section that would have all the, the products we offer and just some more some text sheets and, and just general information. More specific things, startup guides like I, I just showed you, uh, or the ECUs and the EVDRs and the, the displays and anything we offer be available in our electronics portal. So go to our, our normal website, hydroforce.com, go on services and support, electronics portal, as require a sign-in. I'll EVDR demo using the HF Impulse software. And these are kind of some of the things that we will cover. We'll, we'll look at the inputs. Uh, we'll drive the coils to data forward in reverse motion. We'll discuss output frequency and how to tune a, uh, a system. This 1939 interfacing and monitoring input values. We'll monitor values for components of components for tuning. We'll talk about charting and then discuss using the control to standalone or additional I.O. requirements. I minimize this, and we have HF impulse as soon as we show you the startup guide. This is for the EVDR 0201A. It is a preliminary document right now. We're working on the final versions as we speak. So information on the controller can be found in this document. Any of that I discussed today can be reviewed. Um, either through this uh, WebEx presentation or come to these startup guides, and, and these things are documented here also. Okay, so minimize that. The program HF Impulse, which is what we're going to use to interface uh, to our controller. I'm going to move to this screen. So then you're going to see when. Um, when any communications happen as far as in the program. You can see them communicate with a lot of different devices up here. We will be able to communicate with the ECUs um, being worked on now. The EXDR 0101A, which will be the subject of another uh, demonstration. The EDR 0201A, the basic version is what we're going to cover today. And the new controller we're working on in the EXDR 0506. So it was recent files we had and uh, different projects we can, can do. I'm going to do a communication, or communicate the controller initially. So I, I, I select it up here. Uh, the communication window comes up. It tells us we can communicate uh, to the control either through the compressor leaf light or the peak, uh, peak hand system. So I've chosen to use the compressor today. Baud rate 250K. 
and then even our O201A address uh, zero. zero. Search. Last controller, and it found the controller at source address 34. I'm going to select that. It needs to change the configuration of this controller. So, for instance, let's say you purchased an EVR, a valve driver, and you want to convert it to a fan drive system, you would use this download firmware to download a file to make it a fan drive. Same thing with a generator drive. Or if there's a function that we added for you or just a, a general um, update, you would use this to update your controller. Go look at a program that I have been working on. So you, we talked about here, you can save these ICF files. So it would uh, set up on one controller and then download it into another one. So, and we see we've, we've got a tree on the left-hand side. There's information on this as far as project name, ECU model, and firmware version. X settings. Um, you can get up to be 0 to 5 volt, 0 to 10 volt, 0 to 20 milliamps. Uh, assistance type input. E120 is a temperature probe that you can wire into it. A digital input, so an on off. PWM input, so if you have a, a foot pedal that gives a PWM output, you can wire it into this. And then just general frequency. So it says 0 to 5 volts. Most of them that you find as far as an electronic joystick are going to operate, or even pressure sensor, are going to operate between a half and four and a half volts. So I set these um, these tops here, half to four and a half, half volts. Also, if you want to do any ramping on the input, so for instance, um, vehicle that runs over rough terrain, you may desire to have a joystick that has a little bit of a uh, uh, I don't want to dead bait, a little bit of time conditioning in it, and you do that with, with these functions here. All schematic as where to wire the, the input into, so pins 2 and 7. Once this information is located in the startup guide for the O201. Settings, I'm going to have an external input drive both coil A and coil B. This with voltage range, 0 to 5 volts, because we, that's what we said the input would be. And the capacity of the controller is 0 to 2 amps. So amperage left and voltage on the bottom. And I'm going to drive one or the other coil depending on the voltage. Depending on the voltage. So a volt, when the joystick's at a half a volt, drive 1,200 milliamps as far as the output. On down to signal in at 2.35 volts, or signal from at 2.45 volts, I'm sorry, um, there have been no current. So joystick that is a spring to center, the spring to 2.5 volts. So 2.5 volts down to zero, so it's really half a volt to 2.45. I'm going to have one coil, and then from 2.75 to 4.75, I'm going to drive the other coil. And that's that as far as, you know, um, if you want to uh, put different in, in here, set break points, you could really have it down to one break point, so it's just a straight line. Out. Uh, the frequency, this is specific to uh, the device you're trying to drive. So for the de device I have with uh, the valve and coils, 200 hertz is the recommended frequency. This can be found in the HydroForce catalog. T9 settings. Um, if we were um, going to transmit information to the uh, coils as far as coming information, we would set that up here, uh, that subject of the advanced edition, uh, the one eight advanced demonstration. But today I want to transmit uh, my analog input value on 61450. And it's just set here. I'm not going to talk about a whole lot. That'll be the subject of the advanced demonstration. What we saw before. So a program I download to it. So I, we the voltage for the analog input is being read at 2.58 volts. So if I choose this around, you know I can see my my input moves, and you can also see different color lines uh, representing both A coil and B coil being driven. Well, let's go back to the information page, and we can read the firmware version now that we're.
Okay, so you may recall we set up errors, both maximum and minimum of the input error. So I get monitor. One analog input, reach a volt. I'm going to kill it because that's considered an error condition. Sending back half or uh, neutral, which is about two and a half volts. And these will not go away until you cycle the power for safety. Thank you. I'll turn my power supply back on again and go back on online. Okay. Let's back out a little bit. I'm going to do a more of a plus. Uh, so you can see I'm driving B coil. Once I get the four and a half volts on this, I set the same air. Couple of things. Um, indicator in the lower right hand corner and I, I get some uh, some verbiage or an explanation of what's going on so um, it's the air input signal voltage of normal or to high source to cycle power okay so you've seen that cycle long enough. So turn the power off until you get the connection failed. Come back on again. Okay. Log on. So I did voltage, which therefore is allowed me to drive my B coil or drive coil. Okay. Talk about um, starting. We've got a button in the upper right hand corner called uh, charting There's some things around here. Okay. Then starting. Export data. I'm going to export it to this here. Save. Yes. Open up that file. Computer is saying 12:51 p.m. So we can see it gives us a time. It tells what our A coil current is doing, what our B coil current is doing, and what our input signal is doing. Nice little order. It's uh, just something to help troubleshoot this system. Oh, charting again. The last thing I want to do, um, when you're starting up a machine, you may not have your analog input wired in. So there's a way to uh, first values as command to the output. I'll show you that now. We log and go to scale. The type of use I can set it up for a J1939 message. E to the controller. Thirty-nine section. We see that as the system configured right now, I've got one message that is uh, both A and B. And I can select enable and then give a command to drive the valve. But and B valve. We will turn this down a little bit. Go back to scale. We notice that our value has changed from a voltage to a um, to a digital signal. Zero to ten twenty three. So we can see that we are monitoring numbers um, zero to three. This presentation on the EVDR one a controller. The last thing I want to say is, you know, there's two configurable controllers that are available: the EVDR O one O one A, which is one PM output and one analog input. No can, and also EVDR0201A, which is two PWM input or PWM outputs, one analog input, but it has the ability for can. Please email us at electronics.support at 